Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Neelay Patel here, and I'm the owner, designer, and educator at Silver Silk and More, bringing you guys another fantastic project. If you are enjoying these projects, please, please kill that like button, destroy it, uh, tell your friends about it, <laughs> and please do subscribe to my channel. All those things are very important for the health of the channel and for me bringing you guys these fun and exciting tutorials using my product, Silver Silk. You can find out more about Silver Silk at silversilkonline.com. And uh, I'm excited about today's project because I am inspired by the sea and we are going to make these lovely little sand dollar earrings. Um, this is a great way to use seed beads if you have any in your stash and some jump rings, uh, of course. And then I love the cohesion of all the metals and um, the, that little pop of Silver Silk. Um, magic that only silver silk can really bring uh, so i'm going to go ahead and pan you guys down to my table here and i'm going to talk about the tools and materials this is also a live show so if you have any comments or questions please feel free to go ahead and um comment in the feed and then uh, our, my friend joan is working in the background here so she'll uh, sort of pop on people's comments and then we'll answer any questions that you guys might have in the end of the show and so let's get started. All right, we're talking about our tools first uh, so far. So you'll need a pair of chain nose pliers and a pair of wide nose pliers. Both of these are from a company called Wubbers. Um, the wide nose pliers have been dipped in a, tool, a product called Tool Magic. Um, that's why you'll notice that this is a white tip here. It rubberizes the metal tip there. And so picking up findings, um, and especially the silver silk findings, because you can easily scratch it and mar it and do all sorts of funky stuff to it that you don't want to just by mishandling the pliers. But the coating ensures that you will have a nice um, finish that won't be nicked or marked later on. It's also a great way to grip your findings so that they don't slip out. I used to use nylon jaw pliers to close my end caps and that was always a challenge um, until I learned about tool magic it would inevitably slide off my pliers of <laughs> the nylon jaws and fling it across the room. And that was always a hot mess. But luckily um, I was saved by this product, uh, which you can find from softflexcompany.com. All right, I've got a pair of tapered chain nose pliers, which also double as crimpers. We're not gonna be doing any crimping with this project, but I do like these tapered um, ends for using that to open up my jump rings, um, opening up my end caps, we'll use it in fact to open up our double strand end caps later on. Um, but these are from Zoran and I think they're a must have in your stash of tools. Last but not least, I've got my cutters. These are Lindstrom wire cutters. Um, use it for everything that is soft and stringy, uh, which includes beading wire, leather, thread. Um, I've used it for half hard wire as well up to about 20 gauge. Um, sometimes even 16, and they, send, they seem to stay sharp. I've cut memory wire with it before, I admit. I don't use memory wire a whole lot, but uh, memory wire does come in different gauges as well, and I've stuck on the thin side of that. <laughs> but I would recommend just using this for any soft wire um, or half hard wire. So I've got those out to the side, as I also use them to cut my silver silk. Um, let's see, for my materials for this project, this is quite easy to put together. Hi, Maria. She says, hello, everyone. Excited for another day of awesomeness. I'm saying these workshops are so much fun. Um, I enjoy teaching it. I enjoy inspiring you guys. And you guys inspire me, especially for what you post in our Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group, which I have the information down there at the bottom of this little TV that I'm in. <laughs> um, I've got all my materials on my fancy little jewel loom bead board uh, that is great for compartmentalizing all of my materials. Um, it's got my branding on it and this fantastic little ruler that I use time and time again. So I highly recommend if you have a chance um, and don't have a great bead board, then this is the way to go. If you're also into bead weaving, you can use this little, uh, this little cork end to hold your needle. Pretty smart. Smart design, I say. All right, my materials, here's how it goes. So I've got two earring wires in silver. I've got two double strand end caps. These are specialty end caps that have my imprint on it for silver silk, the two S's. Um, and you'll notice that there are two channels. 
you can open up the end cap if they're a little bit too closed in ca these case in this case these are um just by by prying it apart and to, by doing that it'll be easier to insert the capture chain or pearlesque chain right into it later on there's also little teeth inside of these channels these teeth grasp onto the ball chain core of either the capture or pearlesque chain which looks like this um, I'll explain the difference here in a second, but I wanted to just show you guys the end cap. My end caps are uh, custom plated. They come in six different colors um, and I've got a total of 20, no, I'm sorry, 12 uh, different styles of windings, which include everything from lobster claw clasps to triple strand end caps. Um, and the plating is consistent across the board. So if you're really wanting to have um, the same silver color that is tarnish resistant uh, within your piece, then gra uh, grabbing some from the store would be a great idea. Um, I just, I brag about my findings because they're really good. <laughs> so I'm a very horrible salesman otherwise, <laughs> but I love my findings. I believe in them and I'm always happy to talk about them. Uh, you will need a series of jump rings. So these jump rings are a little bit special because they're not um, actually from my store. I had to pick them up from a different vendor only because they needed to be a certain size and a certain width uh, or diameter. And um, you could see that these are an inner diameter of six millimeter. Mine are around, I think, four and a half within the store. Um, but these, again, are just a little bit different to accommodate for the seed beads as well as the technique that we're going to be using. So the inside diameter is six millimeter. And then um, I'm using size eight seed beads. I'm gonna show you how to string those on. It's very easy. And um, I would highly recommend using size eight seed beads, not size 11 because they won't fit. Um, and size six might be a little bit too big. I think you could get away with it with this project if you string one to two on at a time. Um, here, I'm only doing that anyway. But uh, anything bigger than that, it's going to be pretty difficult to accomplish this look. So size eight seed beads, and size eight seed beads come in a ton of different colors. So I just, you know, kind of included this sort of greenish teal in your kit um, if you happen to pick one up. And if you don't have the kit, you can certainly grab seed beads from anywhere. There's a number of great stores and uh, many of my vendor friends that uh, carry seed beads. And so they're easy in access, I guess is all I'm, all I'm saying. <laughs> easy to find. Um, as well as the jump rings. Uh, again, just look for an inner diameter of six millimeter and you're good to go. The capture chain that we're using is about three and a half millimeter or two and a two and a half millimeters, give or take three millimeter. Um, so that that way you could slide that in pretty efficiently um, as we'll be stringing a bunch of these on at a time. So you'll need a total of 22 jump rings. Two of them will be used for our charm. And uh, I went ahead and you know, attach those. And then we're going to split up the rest of the jump rings. Uh, 10 of them will have two beads on it as such. And 10 of them will have one bead on it. Okay. So I went ahead and pre-made those, but I'll show you how to do that real quick. You're going to take a jump ring and you're going to grab both of your chain nose pliers. I'm going to push one chain nose plier away from me and one toward me to open it up, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna grab a seed bead and I'm going to string it on to my jump ring, just like that. Very easy, I'm telling you, this, this technique could not get any easier. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to reverse the motion that I just did to close my jump ring. And I wanna make sure that the two wire ends kiss each other. It's a romantic way to go about it, right? With your beading. And I wanna make sure that that seam is fully closed whenever I have all of this nice and shut. Um, any sort of gaps will just allow that seed bead to fall right through. So just take the extra time whenever you're doing this technique to really um, push those ends together. You can kind of wiggle this back and forth until you feel it, in fact rubbing up against each other like that until they finally are closed, those two ends. So that's when you know you've got a perfect little jump ring to go. All right, so we've covered that, we've covered the seed beads, we've covered the charms, 
And now we need to know about the silver silk. I am using a product called Capture Chain. Capture Chain is a ball chain core silver silk chain um, that has a ball chain core inside of it and a knitted sock um, essentially that's been uh, worked and, and drawn down over it. So if you can imagine six latch hook needles take a single piece of wire and essentially stitch a sock together in a, in a round cylindrical form. And then it goes through the machine and it's drawn down to hug that ball chain core. So you get this really fine, really detailed, uh, I think highly luxurious chain. And the wire that I'm using is, uh, is tarnish resistant and it is uh, very high quality and very soft and it's as thin as human hair. So it's truly a revolutionary product. I love silver silk. Um, I always love silver silk and I'm just enjoying using it in my projects because it just adds that extra touch of magic and detail that I don't think um, any other material could really replicate, you know? So I'm using again, a total of six inches and we're just gonna chop that right in half to three inches because we're gonna make two separate earrings this time. And that is basically ready to go. So I'm gonna grab my silver silk and my jump rings, and I'm gonna to start to string all of this together. So you can take a jump ring and you can string it right through. I'm gonna alternate five with, um, with the single and the double seed beads on it. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. With the size eight seed beads, if you wanted to string a few more seed beads on, um, let's say if you wanted to do a pattern of two seed beads on one jump ring and three on the other, maybe even getting a little funky and alternating the colors, because I'm just using a single color of seed beads here. Um, but imagine if you had a really cool bead soup mix of different size eight seed beads and just, you know, kind of randomly throwing colors together. I think that would look for a really, really nice uh, design. Um, but you can definitely do that. That is that is totally up to you and the theme that you're going for. With this particular airing, I wanted to keep it very monochromatic and just let the blue and that seafoam color, you know, speak for itself. Um, I'm going to string on a charm and I'm going to continue alternating my seed beads and jump rings. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so that's pretty much the earring. You can't get any easier than that, right? So I'm just gonna grab both of my ends there and pinch them together like this so that they're parallel to each other. And here's where you can kind of alter the size of the earring that you wanna make. So when I do the three inches, you're going to end up with an earring that looks about this big. Um, if you wanna cut it shorter, you can absolutely do that. And you'll just have a nice little uh, petite earring um, that's just shorter. And conversely, if you wanted to not use six inches, but if you wanted to use, um, I don't know, eight inches, then you'll just have a bigger loop um, with, with the single earring. So just something to think about. Think about your personal style and think about what you want to do for you. Um, and if it's a gift for someone, maybe if they wear smaller earrings, you could definitely taper that size down pretty easily. Hi, Kathy. She says, Neela, you need to post a video showing us the knitted machine working. Oh, honey, I definitely can do a close up. I would say it's mostly proprietary, but <laughs> um, I think there are some pictures actually that I can point you to that's on silversilkonline.com. If you go to the Silver Silk education page, you will see a series of different links that tell you and talk about the knitted wire. Um, within that page, you can see the different cylinders that are used for each of those um, knitted wires and how they're made. So there's some great informational resources right on the website for you. All right, so I'm going to stick on my end cap. Uh, I think this is the one that I in fact spread open a little bit and I'm gonna do a little bit more just to be on the safe side here. Um, Cause a couple of millimeters, you'll be surprised at how big of a difference it makes just in crimping everything it just it's so much easier if you have a wider mouth to work with okay 
I'm going to grab my wide nose pliers. Oh, Teresa, I'm so glad you could join in. She says, so beautiful. Love this design. We love you. Um, so Teresa is our Silky's brand ambassador. She is the welcome committee to our group and uh, just a great resource for questions and information and such a kind, warm person. So big shout out and love to you, Teresa and Greta. Um, we hope you're doing well and uh, staying healthy and we love you so much. Okay, so that is an earring. Um, you can see that I've got a little bit of a bigger loop than my example piece, but that's okay because I'm going to give it to someone that enjoys wearing big earrings. I'm going to string on my um, earring hook and I have got this ready to go. You can in fact fluff this up a little bit just by pressing against or away from each other these uh, knitted wire loops and it'll actually help to kind of round it out a little bit just like that. Whoops, I have it backwards. I've got my hook backwards. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I don't have the silver silk side facing up, but that's okay. As long as I'm consistent on the next one, um, that's all that matters. Or conversely, I could always just turn my charm right around and I'll have it all facing up in the same direction. Okay, so here we go again, you guys. We're gonna string on five of the jump rings. Hi, Maria. She says, don't forget to make sure your charm and finding are both the same direction. I know. Uh, now I'm thinking that I should probably switch my charm around <laughs> uh, just because you have me uh, thinking about it now. So I think I'll go back and do that um, right after I finish this design or this particular earring. I'm going to make sure that I do it on this one, though. I love that you guys are also paying attention to those details because they are super important. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and string on my charm. Emily, hi, Emily, says, I love this easy design. Thank you. Uh, easy, efficient, sassy, and I would say just high class, classy look. Um, that, I think, is, is sort of what I want my brand to be. It's easy but elegant. Okay, got it all strung up, and I'm going to open up my end cap. This one's really closed. So I'm just going to pry it open. Okay, gather up both ends. This time, uh, Maria, I will make sure that it is facing the same direction. And I'm going to go back and fix the other one. So thank you for pointing that out. Very important information there. Okay. Oh, hi, Trudy. Super, uh, super duper adorable earrings. The addition of the beaded jump rings. Does the earrings proud? Thank you. I think so too. I absolutely think so too. Okay. Everything's facing the right direction here. I'm gonna just give this a good smush. Sue, Sue, it's so good to see you. It says that is gorgeous. Thank you. I appreciate that. Loving this design as well. Those of you who did grab the kit, let us know how you're getting on in the Silkies group and um, please do post and show us if you've made any of the designs. I know many of you are probably at work catching a lunch break here um, or just have stuff going on. Um, and so if any time you do complete stuff and it doesn't have to be this week, it could be any day of the week or month or year. Um, we love seeing your designs and are always inspired by what you make. And you guys inspire me too, because I come up with lots of ideas just based on how you guys alter and uh, create things too. And they make for great tutorials for other folks out there that are looking for information and um, other inspirations. Ah, uh, elegant to the nines. Thanks, Melanie. That's a sweet comment. All right. Uh, I turned my earring around because now I've got a pair of the most elegant earrings that I have created up to this point. Uh, inspired by the sea. Have any of you picked up sand dollars by the sea? I actually haven't, but we all live to dream, right? <laughs> One of these days I will. Gloria says, those are really cute. I definitely will be making some. Oh, excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm going to do a little close up on this so you guys can see a little bit better. So easy to put together, easy to alter. Um, again, just like playing with seed beads in the most... Uh, non-difficult way because i know some I, i'm a i love cb weaving i i enjoyed it um years ago even more than i do now <laughs> but uh i anytime that i do get to add seed beads or that pop of color into my design without you know trying too hard to 
make sure that my thread and my needle are going the right way and everything else. Like this is just a great alternative way to use seed beads without having to do a, any bead weaving actually. And it just adds that extra little touch of detail and sparkle um, that I think really complements the silver silk. And there are so many seed beads out there that it would be a shame to not use. Hi again, uh, Sally. It's good to see you. I love the jump rings on this. Gives the whole piece a steampunk vibe. Oh, you know, I didn't even think about that. Um, it does give it a steampunk vibe because it looks like coils. That is such a great observation. And I just posted three bracelets I made last night This and this morning. Oh, goodness. You've been on a roll, Melody. Um, that's fantastic to hear. So, yeah, uh, it definitely does have a steampunk vibe. Digging that. I may take that as inspiration for a future piece, in fact. Uh, if I change up the sea theme into a more industrial gears and stuff, that might be kind of a fun take on it. Oh, uh, Trudy says, I would like to make uh, a little bigger. Ooh, yes. So like have those big statement earrings. I like that idea. In fact, you can even um, have a charm that you maybe glue on top of the end cap that has a little hole or something that you can attach it to. And that way you can attach and fill in the middle of the big uh, loop that you might create. So I've done it on a previous tutorial. So my YouTube is a great, great resource for old tutorials that I've done. Um, that still has great ideas that live on to, to the end of time, uh, just because that technique and that style is quite versatile and um, it just aged well, I guess. As I come up with new projects, it's it's important for me to keep um, all of this content over on YouTube and and to have that library available for you guys. All right, so I'm going to do a quick scroll. Um, I believe Joan has done most of the comments already up to this point. I didn't see any questions come up, which hopefully that means that I've explained this content really well and um, um, that I've inspired you guys to create. I know many of you do make these designs after the video has aired, uh, only because replay is available. Some of my tutorials get a little crazy, so it's probably good to pause and make as I'm talking our way through. <laughs> uh, totally understand that. And I do that myself sometimes too with other YouTube tutorials and whatnot. So. Um, but uh, we've got a great uh, another three tutorials coming up, um, one later today and then two more tomorrow. So we've got lots to learn, um, lots to be inspired by. And uh, I'm going to flip back myself around here. And I just want to say thank you again for joining me for this project. I know it was a very quick and easy project. Um, hopefully you guys will, those of you that did grab the kit can make this quite easily. And um, I guess I'll just check in with you guys uh, in the Silkies group. And again, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, that is very important for this channel. And you can also find more inspiration on Instagram and our Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group. Um, if you want to do some light shopping, you can hop on over to silversilkonline.com. You can check out this video description over on YouTube and find uh, all the materials list and resources there. So I love you from the bottom of my heart. And thank you so much for supporting my small business. And I will see you again on the next tutorial. We'll chat it 